camp a little while in the wilderness. In the wilderness, in the wilderness. We'll camp a little while in the wilderness. Then I'm going home. Then I'm going home. As soon as I could walk, I started to ski. It's always just been a passion. It's totally ephemeral. It changes from moment to moment. Cross country is just the best. To be able to get outside and get some exercise in the winter. And it was just a whole new thing. And just so hopefully will be a lifelong sport. You also found yourself part of a really unique community where everyone's there to help everyone, um, which is always a really cool part. Everyone wants everyone to learn to ski. It's a wonderful way to be outdoors and uh, enjoy the mountain area here that we love uh, during the winter. And it's great exercise and can't beat it. I got started cross-country skiing back in probably around 1990 when uh, your grandparents brought the family out here to Western Maryland in the winter and we took some lessons over at uh, Deep Creek Lake State Park with uh, somebody and, and I've been skiing ever since. One of the things I really enjoy about it is that it's something that your mother and I can do together or that we do do together. Uh, we started out skiing together and, and you know, we may have different um, uh, levels that each of us can, can get to in terms of uh, challenges and, and, and whatnot. But um, I always look forward to going out on an afternoon with your mom cross-country skiing through the forest. So that's, that's something that's pretty terrific about it. Uh, I got started cross-country skiing with the uh, Adventure Sports Institute at uh, Garrett College. I had never really done any skiing. I had snowboarded once downhill. Um, but then I heard about these classes for cross-country skiing, so I decided to take them. And then I've fallen in love ever since. The classes at ASI, they're usually a three progression, um, three weekend course. It's gonna start with the beginner level, which is introduction. We spend most of our time just teaching people how to ski and then showing them kind of the beautiful places you can go on skis and just giving the overall introduction. Um, the second class is going to be more focused on we try to train them as instructors so they can go on to instruct other people and introduce them to the sport. And then the third class we actually have somebody come down from PSIA and they can get an instructor level certification. I got started doing it by cross-country skiing in the wintertime as a way of um, utilizing maybe something I could do to make money actually at some point in the winter because I had always skied. And we skied out at Canaan one weekend and found this route over the mountain and found that little ski area. It was in next to another one that already existed and came right down to the window and looked in there and went, wow, it's an old downhill ski place. And then we decided later we would go over and talk to the guy who owned it. Kind of worked out slowly but surely that from there. Some of the difficulties is mostly staffing and you know, just not having enough work for your people. But um, we utilize, you know, of course our business is down, but we have a little bit of augment. We have a cafe and we do some sales, and sometimes we utilize man-made snow, which is usually uh, available. So between all that, we get by, but it's never as good. So you kind of like a lot of things in life. You know, when it's up and good, you you can make make it happen, and when it's down, you just gotta draw your claws in, simplify, and repair, and get ready for, you know, when it is good. And, one of the th cool things about around here is that when it's good, people are really ce cele you know, celebrate, and it's a wonderful feeling, and it's, uh, 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 it's electric. So 
That's the nice thing around here is that you don't take it for granted. So when it's happened, everybody's like super happy. I started cross country skiing when I was about 19, and then I learned to ski when I was about five downhill. So the first 14 years of my life, I downhill skied, and then since 19, I've been cross country skiing. And I used to play hockey as a kid, and I always thought that cross country skiing was like this marriage of like playing of, of ice skating and downhill skiing, a com combination of the two. And I always loved to skate and I always loved to ski downhill. So, I, you know, the two of them kind of go together. Except that rather than skating on a pond or a lake or a river, you got the entire planet that you can ski on if it has snow on it. So um, it's a, just a bigger canvas to have fun with. So in this part of the world, uh, compare it to New England, compare it to the upper Midwest or out west in the mountains, they have a lot of snow. And they have a lot of places that have snow. Uh, in this area, there's very few acres that get dependable snow. And so that's what kind of makes it special is that people go, West Virginia or Maryland skiing? You gotta be kidding me. And it actually is better than they think, but it's only in certain spots. So. Um, there is no, not very much ski culture in the area. So that makes it interesting, is that you're still a frontier ski area. You're helping people introduce themselves and every weekend, either wherever you are in the mid-Atlantic, you're getting a lot of beginners, a lot of first timers. And uh, you know, people say, I thought I had to go to Norway to cross country ski. That's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> you don't actually have to go to Europe to cross country ski, but uh, it's certainly, uh... so that's what makes it special is that it's, um, you gotta be way up in the mountains and we ski on a lot of, uh, a lot of steep terrain. And I think that's what makes it fun too. Uh, the business started up around New Germany State Park where I grew up. Um, in 1981, and we just had a rental shop. It started with a, uh, just a few rentals that we had in our uh, hallway in our house. And people like tried their boots on in our living room and stuff. And then we moved the shop to our basement. And then uh, we did that for 25 years. And then for five years, we had it here on our farm. And so we had our own trail system here. And and a rental shop and lessons. Max and I ran Backbone Mountain Cross Country Ski Farm for about five years. As well as being a cross country um, ski shop, um, we also are a fully functioning organic farm. We grow produce, mushrooms, and raise pastured pork. We stopped because it got to be just um, just too much for us to, to manage. We had two weather-dependent businesses, being farmers, um, and then having another business that relied on having just the right kind of weather. Uh, didn't really, wasn't a smart business decision, and uh, We've had, you know, a little baby and small children, and we had a couple of bad years weather-wise. A couple of, a couple of years where there just wasn't enough snow, um, and so we just decided it was probably best for us to put that one to rest. The winters were gradually getting shorter and shorter, and we were getting less snow each year, um, and as well as the fact that the ski season was starting to overlap with the farming season when we would start to uh, put seeds in our greenhouse to start plants um, and work in the fields. And it became too much work for uh, not enough payback. Most people would enjoy gliding across the planet rather than walking. Walking is good enough and cool, but when you can take that same thing and actually free glide across the planet, it is so fun. It's so uh, natural and it's, uh, it's everything. It can be challenging, it can be simple, it can just be access, it can be for work, it can be for nothing but you know, fun or exercise. 
if you like backpacking, if you like going out into remote areas of the mountains uh, during the summer, this, this is the same thing in the winter. You can uh, you know, head out to Whitegrass or head over to Harrington Manor or any number of places and, and climb the mountain and, and be, be away from everywhere. And the, the serenity of the mountain forest during the winter is even more special than it is during the summer because the, you know, the sun glistening off the snow and the incredible views you have through the trees is just, just phenomenal. One of the biggest joys of having the ski business was um, watching families come out together. And uh, I think that cross country skiing is a great unifier. And it was so cool to watch you know, people come out with their teenagers who maybe they wouldn't do too many different things with and, and they would come out and just enjoy a fantastic day of being outside in nature in the snow together. Um, you know, you kind of watch people awkwardly put their stuff on and figure out what they're doing and they come back and they're just, we're having such a good time and I was really happy to be able to share that. And I think that cross country skiing is just a great family activity. Um, and I hope that people are able to continue it for many, many generations to come. Cross country skiing is a good option um, for people who enjoy taking their time because you can go as slow as you want. Um, you can be as involved as you want in the sport. Um, I like it because it's calm. It's like hiking, but you get to uh, shred powder on the way down. It's a perfect way to get out in the winter, and I think it kind of happens once a year, according to what I've heard or read, that winter will come around every year. So it's like a seasonal thing. You should do it. Everybody should be required by federal law to cross-country ski.